So we need the substring function. So if I were to go back here in my code, let me show you what's happening here. The substring function. The substring function does exactly what it says it does. It takes the substring of any integer or character. All right. So here we have the date uh, within DF2, right? Just as a reminder, DF2, that's the format. This is how it basically works. I want a substring of the date column. I want to start at the first character, and I want to go up to the, four, the fourth character. If I were to run this right here, sorry, I, in my code, it's lowercase. Right, I go to DF2 right here, and now I scroll all the way to the right, do it here. Scroll all the way to the right, you have, now have this year column. Because all I did was I took a substring of the date column. Now it doesn't matter that date's an integer. It doesn't matter if it's, a, it's an integer. I can still take a substring of the digits. And in this case, again, if you look at the code, I'm basically taking the first digit up to and including the fourth digit, and that's why the first four digits are what? It's the year. So now, I think I'm good to go. My DF2, I have the year column. My price DF, I have the year, I have the I period column, but again, it's, the, it's, it's a different name, but it's basically the first four digits of the year. And now, I'm ready to do my VLOOKUP, guys. All right, and my VLOOKUP, It's basically going to be the price DF I'm joining into the DF2 table. Now this is gonna get a little bit weird how this works. This is gonna be a little bit strange for you guys. Now a lot of times if you guys go look online, the way you guys seem to merge tables is the merge function. It's very easy and it's it's very flexible it's, 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 uh, and it's great to use. The problem with the merge function is that if you have large data sets, it gets very slow. Data tables has its own unique way of merging tables, right? And the syntax is right here, this syntax right here. Now let me break, break down what's happening. The table that we are going to do the VLOOKUP into, into, that is the table that, that we basically open up with the open bracket and the close bracket, all right? The first parameter, the first parameter is the table that's basically what we are getting the, v, the values from. In this case, we're getting the prices from the price DF table. So that's why that's the first parameter here, all right? Comma. The second parameter between the first two commas is basically what is the new column being created in DF2? Well, that will be price, all right? And what is the existing column in price DF where we're getting those values? That as well is, if we call them price DF right here, that's price. Sorry, I went kind of fast there. That's price right there. Here, this column, we must take the column name syntax and all from the price DF table. But this column right here, because it's being created new in DF2, it could be anything we want, right? The syntax, it could be any uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. In fact, in my code, I'm just gonna do lowercase just so you guys see the difference, all right? All right, so that's this part right here, comma. And now this is probably the weirdest part right here. This is how do you join the two tables? How do you join the two tables? If we go back here again, it's not enough for us to just join on the tickers. It's not enough. Why? Because if I were to just join on the, a, the tickers, A, there's three A's over here. There's three A's over here. Which price goes where? That is dictated by the period column in this table and the, sorry, let me close that, the DF2 table right here right, which is the year one right here. So I want to join these tables, not just by ticker, but by ticker and period and year. 
the year values basically. So when I go here, it's a new keyword called on. Okay, new keyword called on. And it'll basically be I'm joining on, again, notice the C function here, this comes out of nowhere, but the C function because I'm joining on more than one column. That's why I need the C function. If I didn't, if I was just joining on one function, on one column, I wouldn't have needed the C function. All right, but here, because I have two columns I'm joining on, I need the C function. C parentheses, year equals quote year, comma, ticker equals quote ticker. What is going on here? Basically, this year is the column name from DF2. And it's joining, we're joining this, we're matching this up with the year, this year column from this table. Because this is the column from the table where we're getting the data from, this column must be in quotes. Again, yes, it's weird. I don't know why they do that. That's the syntax. And by the way, again, we're doing it this way because it's much faster, especially when you have large data sets. It's a much faster joint. It's instantaneous. All right. Here, likewise, this ticker column, it comes from DF2. This ticker column, syntax and all, comes from here, this, the, where we're getting the data from. And because that's where we're getting the data from, it must be in quotes. It must be in quotes. Let's see this live in action. Come back here in my code. All right. So again, I'll do this for you again. DF2, that is where I'm creating my new column. I'm getting that new column from the table price df. All right. The new column I want to create in df2 will be price. And just to show, just to differentiate it, I'm going to make it lowercase. All right. And I can do this because this is a new column that's being created. But now here, with, what is the column that, I, where, where, he, which column here has the data I need for this new column I'm creating? I go to price df right here. Well, it's the price column. All right, very easy, capital P. All right. Now, the last part. All right, now the last part. On what? Which columns am I combining to make this sucker happen? Again, if you go to DF2 right here, price DF right there, I got three A's, I got three A's, I got three dates, I got three dates. I gotta match them up by ticker and date, all right? Match them up by ticker and date. So here I have ticker and period. Notice, again, the uppercase and lowercase, capital T, lowercase p. Here, I have ticker, lowercase t, and year, capital Y. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's join, let's join the tickers first. The first column that goes first is, again, corresponds to this table, the table where the new column is being made. So I have to look at DF2, see what its ticker is. It's a lowercase ticker, boom. Equals. Now I have to join this to the, no, I first need quotes because I'm now getting, I'm now joining this to the table where I'm getting the data from. And I need to look in price DF and see what its ticker was. And it's a ticker, column again, capital T. Doesn't matter. All right, comma. Now I'm gonna join the second column. I go back to my DF2 table. And there, it's a <coughs> year, capital Y. I'm joining that to a column again from price DF. I need my quotes. I go to price DF. And that column name is period lowercase p. I go ahead and I can execute this. And now if you click on DF2, ladies and gentlemen, scroll away to the right, look what you have. You got your price. Now we have everything we need, every data element we need to finally calculate earnings yield, the OI average and the price, right? All this work just to get these two pieces of data right there. And now I can just basically execute the commands. 
First thing I'm going to do, remember, in our data, we don't have total debt. We have total debt per share. The way you get that is you just multiply shares outstanding by total debt per share. So I'm going to do that first, just to make things simple. All the rows. T to create a new column called total debt. And this will be basically shares outstanding times total debt per share. Right? Execute this. I now have my total debt, all right? Again, it's like thousands, millions, or whatever, the syntax. All right, so now, I now wanna do the rest of my formula. Straight from my formula, I'm just gonna now imply it. Earnings yield will now be OI average divided by shares outstanding times price, or market value, plus total debt, minus cash, plus preferred shares, plus minority interest. All the rows, earnings yield, OI average divided by shares outstanding times, I believe I have a lowercase price in my DF2, yes I do, plus my total debt minus my cash plus preferred shares plus minority interest. I execute this and finally, finally, I have my earnings yield. All right, I have my earnings yield. And I have my earnings yield for all these three periods and dates, right? And what I want to do using these three periods and dates, I want to basically uh, calculate uh, my strategy. I'm going to basically use the earnings yield now for our next lab. We're pretty much done with this lab at this point, but we want to use this for our next lab to basically pick stocks. And again, we know we're not supposed to do that, but again, we, I want to use it to pick stocks just as a way that you guys get comfortable with um, building, backtesting certain strategies. Um, but the next video will actually be now practice set three. Practice set three, there's a lot of questions. So the next video I do now, it'll be a separate video. We'll just be on practice set three. All right, um, any questions, any errors with your code? During class, we'll uh, we'll go over it. If you have any, if you don't have any questions, you don't have to log on. If you don't need, if you don't, if you got everything and every, you understand everything, then you don't need to log on. All right. But the next video now will be for practice set three, for class tomorrow.